we totally get it. We publish a ton of content on this podcast, and it can be a lot to keep up with. That's why we've started the B2B Growth Big Three, a no-fluff email that boils down our three biggest takeaways from an entire week of episodes. Sign up today at sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. That's sweetfishmedia.com slash big three. You're listening to B2B Growth, a daily podcast for B2B leaders. We've interviewed names you've probably heard before, like Gary Vaynerchuk and Simon Sinek, but you've probably never heard from the majority of our guests. That's because the bulk of our interviews aren't with professional speakers and authors. Most of our guests are in the trenches leading sales and marketing teams. They're implementing strategy. They're experimenting with tactics. They're building the fastest growing B2B companies in the world. My name is James Carberry. I'm the founder of Sweetfish Media, a podcast agency for B2B brands, and I'm also one of the co-hosts of this show. When we're not interviewing sales and marketing leaders, you'll hear stories from behind the scenes of our own business. We'll share the ups and downs of our journey as we attempt to take over the world. Just kidding. Well... Maybe. Let's get into the show. Welcome back to the B2B Growth Show. I'm your host for today's episode, Logan Lyles with Sweetfish Media. I'm joined today by Thomas Gorney. He is the CEO and chairman at Nextiva. Thomas, how are you doing today, sir? I am doing good. How about you? I'm doing fantastic, Thomas. Thank you so much for joining us. I think you are going to have some very key lessons to share with listeners today. Great story in the growth that that you've seen in growing a bootstrap company. Before we get into some of those lessons learned, especially leadership lessons learned from the CEO perspective, I would love for you to give listeners a little bit of perspective, a little bit of background on yourself and Nextiva. Tell us a little bit about your background and what you and the team are up to these days. Well, absolutely. Happy to do this. As you can probably hear on my accent, I, I'm not originally from the United States. Um, I was originally born in Poland and I came to the U.S. at the age of 20. And I joined to start the business. And since then, I have been an entrepreneur, a lifelong entrepreneur. And we started Nextiva roughly 10 years ago. And the reason that we started Nextiva was because what we encountered in our prior businesses is issues with a lot of the tools that we were using in our businesses, from font systems to uh, collaboration solutions to CRM tools. And what we discovered that many other people have the exact same issues as us, and we were determined to fix it. And we started Nextiva originally as a pure VoIP provider. Since then, a lot of things have changed. Today, we, we're providing suite of different type of services on a platform where we're really giving businesses a holistic view of their customers and a much better way of working in businesses and really providing context around the customer behaviors. So that's who we are. And we, we are extremely excited about our future. And I always say to our team, we are just at the starting point. We are still the startup, although we have grown tremendously. I believe that we are at the beginning of our journey. Mm, yeah, I, I think there is a lot of power in that mentality, Thomas. Uh, James and Sangram were talking about that on the Flip My Funnel podcast here recently about uh, the Jeff Bezos uh, letters to the team members at, at Amazon and, and to the board talking about that day one mentality. It sounds like you share some uh, some perspective there in keeping that that startup mentality alive and well in your organization, even though you've you've grown well beyond kind of that. That, that initial ramp phase. So that actually transitions yeah. into the, the first question I wanted to, to ask you is, you know, what are some of the, the key lessons you've learned in, in helping grow specifically a, a bootstrapped company? You know, there are a lot of listeners who are, who are in uh, funded companies who have gone, you know, that track for growth. But when you are a, a bootstrap growing brand, there are some different challenges. So for folks that are in that latter camp, what are some of the, the lessons learned that you'd like to share there? You know, I, I was fortunate uh, at the right point in my life to have, you know, my, my share of successes and failures. And I have learned more from the failures than, than the successes in the past. So as we started Nextiva, you know, I, I established them early on from the very beginning, how we want to operate as a business. And we're really operating by three simple rules. 
number one rule is that we do not have an exit strategy. And when I talk to entrepreneurs, I often tell them that if you focus on building your business, your external outcome may be significantly better than you envision. But if you focus on an external outcome, you know, you may forget to build your business. And in, for us, it, it wasn't about an exit and it isn't about an exit until today. Secondly, you know, I got to business and this is just my personal thing, but I would definitely recommend that to, to anyone. If you are going to do something and you're going to, to be an entrepreneur, being an entrepreneur is hard. And so you better enjoy it and you better have a lot of passion around the things that you are doing because you will have ups and downs and you need to believe in what you are doing. Uh, when you truly believe in, in your vision, in your mission, you can accomplish great things. But if you start doubting yourself, that's much tougher to do. So to me, you know, when I start businesses, I do not start them with a commercial outcome in mind. Although I always look at, at the markets and, and I have the saying for myself that I look at the gaps in the markets, but also I make sure that there is a market in the gap because only if the gap exists and the market doesn't exist, you don't have a business. But, you know, provided that this exists, from that point on, I focus on really the value that we would provide to our customers. And the third thing that I really focus on is the team. And it's probably the most important thing of those three, because the, the team would makes everything happen. And, and I know a lot of, it's such a cliche statement, right? A, a lot of people say that, that, you know, we have the best team and, you know, that's why we're winning and so on and so on. But what I mean with that is a little bit different. You can have the best team, but you still may lose if the team is not rocking and gelling together really, really well. Mm -hmm. And to me, having a best team is having, number one, really good people on your team. That means ethical, having the same vision and mission and, and mindset. And then you can overcome a lot of things because then you can, you can argue, you can disagree, but ultimately you're going in the same direction. If you don't have the basics established, you can have the best talented people, but even then it is tough to succeed. And I have seen a lot of businesses fail with really smart people because mm -hmm. they weren't aligned. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, I, I think we see that in, in pro sports teams, you know, the, the trend over the last several years has been to, to build all-star teams in, in the NBA and, and those don't always work out. It's not just the raw talent. That is the foundation that you need an, enough talent to build a winning team, but you need to get them, as you say, aligned and growing in, in the same direction. As you built Nextiva, obviously the communication space, you know, specifically the VoIP space is a fairly competitive market. What advice do you have for uh, other founders and business leaders that are facing a, an extremely competitive market, especially if they are the underdog looking at some very well-established brands? Um, are, are there some things you maybe wish you'd known going into that marketplace or things that you did that you feel like might not have been intuitive for other folks that are finding themselves in a similar market? To start with, I would like to clarify, uh, you know, as the CEO and founder, you, you get a lot of credit for uh, building a business. But I would, I would like to emphasize that it's not me who built the business. It is mm -hmm. a great number of people in the business that, mm -hmm. and we build that business together. And that's important to me to draw this distinction because as a CEO and entrepreneur, I get an unproportional share of uh, credit for, for what we have done. Having said that, you know, we are in a competitive market, but the way I look at the world and this, when we start and, and I look at everything that we do, but I will provide you a specific example, is that I, I don't find this very interesting to do the exact same thing or close to the same thing as our competitors. You know, I, when I wake up in the morning, if I go to sleep, I, um, <laughs> you know, I want to rock, I want to rock on things that dif are differentiated, that provide greater value, that are 10 times better than any, anything else out there. And when we entered the, the VoIP market, and, and again, I'm just giving you a specific example from the past. Now we're rocking on, you know, much bigger and hopefully 
uh, greater things how we're going mm -hmm. to contribute value sure, to customer. Sure, yeah. But when we started in the void market, we looked at the void market and we saw big issues there. We looked at that the business communication space lack innovation for many years. We, we saw providers and companies gouging uh, their customers with high prices, high support costs, really low quality products. And there was lack of motivation really transition to Void because a lot of the providers back then in this space and a lot of them were the Galayas, you know, like those big telcos, they had lack of motivation to transition because they were charging big licensing fees for phone systems up front. So going, you know, going into a service type of monthly reoccurring model uh, wasn't that attractive. And so, so when, so when we entered the market, we didn't enter that because, you know, we just wanted to be a replica of, of somebody else. But when this, the idea for Nextiva was born, it was born with the intent that we can reshape and redefine the business communication space. And that's how we got started. And our entire goal was to help every business to look and feel like a Fortune 500 company. And I don't mean the bureaucracies of Fortune 500 companies, but having access to technologies in the VoIP space that those large companies have. And that didn't exist then. Mm -hmm. And we were yeah. one of those first people to do that. And so that's what got us excited. That's what got us get up in the morning and come to work and fight the big guys. The, ultimately, the space became a little bit more crowded, but our main focus is always on providing value. And as much as we, we, we are for-profit business, and we need to be because, you know, we, we're supporting a lot of livelihoods here, uh, and I always say it, we're not Red Cross. At the same time, we, we very much focus on our purpose, and we see that providing value to customers comes first, and money is just a side effect of providing value. Hey guys, chances are you're running SEO, PPC, social, email, and other digital channels. So why aren't we spending the same time and attention on our highest converting channel, referrals? We all say we value word of mouth because we know it brings our best leads that end up being our best customers. But most of us aren't using referrals as an active marketing channel. Enter the definitive guide to referral marketing from our friends over at Ambassador. To get your free copy, head over to getambassador.com slash growth. You'll learn best practices, tips, and strategies to generate positive and organic word of mouth by building your own scalable referral program. Learn from the world's leading referral company, Ambassador, trusted by leading marketers at HubSpot, Zillow, and Gong.io to build and scale their word of mouth programs. Again, go get your free copy of the definitive guide to referral marketing at getambassador.com slash growth. And if you want to talk to their experts there, just drop them a note. All right, let's get back into the show. Uh, I love that. Uh, I think you said some some very great things there, Thomas. You know, focusing on what's the 10x effect you could bring to the marketplace, not just where can you provide something that's incrementally better. You know, when when Steve Jobs and Apple announced the iPhone, they didn't say that, hey, this is a little bit better than than the BlackBerry. They they launched into something completely new. They didn't even talk about, you know, the BlackBerry as being quote unquote, a, a smartphone at that point, they just went in the new direction and tried to take people from, not from just A to B, but but much further down the road. And I think that's that's more exciting. It fills your team with with that passion and purpose that that you talked about. Thomas, I, I really admire your humility as as a leader. And I think that feeds into the last thing I know you wanted to talk about. And that is as, as you're scaling a team, the the importance of CEOs to get out of the boardroom and get into the trenches, specifically with their sales and marketing teams. Are are there some lessons there that you think would be great for for other executives to hear in things that you felt were instrumental in driving alignment or, or getting things done or creating the culture? What, what were some of the things that you saw by getting, quote unquote, out of the boardroom? So I can only speak from my experience and my way is not the only way to do it. Uh, obviously, you know, there are stylistically different type of CEOs and, and, sure. and success doesn't get determined by one style. But what I can share with you a little bit how I 
prefer to run the business. Number one, I like to be in tune with the business up and down in, in every area of the business. When the business was small, it was easy to you know, walk around, chat, get everybody in the same room and really have a good pulse on the business. As the business got larger, we had to implement systems in place that allowed me to do this, you know, from anywhere where I am, regardless if I am in the office or, you know, on the road, talking to customers or partners or, you know, or, 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 or simply, you know, it, the amount of information became so so much that it would be tough to process it in a day. So we implemented a lot of systems and a lot of data uh, and uh, reports on the very beginning in the business. So we could run the business really based on data and analytics. And that data and analytics on the beginning and until today is getting delivered to me, even depends on the on the on the subject and issue several times a day. On the end of the day, I get a summary report about all the metrics that I care about. And if I see a metrics not to look as I would expect, I manage them by exception, double clicking on that and then uh, drilling down a little bit more. That's kind mm -hmm. of from the data perspective. From a human perspective and culture perspective, I like to be involved with the team and, and accessible and visible, regardless where we are. We have you know, location all over the world, you know, in Europe, in United States, in Mexico. And just give you an example, when we open our office in Europe, where we have now uh, a little bit over uh, 300 people, I literally for the first year spent there every two weeks. I, I didn't have to, but I spent there because I wanted to instill the Nextiva culture in place. And I wanted to make a statement that, it, that this is important I may wanted to make the statement over there and to our team here. And, and I think that was kind of the key to the success. So to me, you know, it, it being in tune with the business is key. So I can have intelligent conversation with everybody. I, you know, I'm not one of the CEOs that, you know, you bring me data points and you can basically, you know, position things around and I'm not going to know something about this. And so I, I want to be very informed about where we're taking the business. If I run the business, I need to be informed, number one. Number two, I would say, and I would like to finish with that is, you know, it, 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 every CEO has inclination to focus on certain areas. Mm -hmm. You know, I am, I am probably more of a, you know, product and marketing CEO. And that's the two areas I focus on because, you know, I really define the vision for the company. I set the direction and, I'm, and I'm, I want to make sure that direction is aligned. And in order for that direction to be aligned, uh, you know, I, regardless how much our executive team is aligned with me, which they are, I still want everyone to hear that from me. Because, you know, regardless how, again, how good you align, it's still the telephone game, right? And with every person in between, mm -hmm. you lose a little bit of the information. Mm -hmm. And I don't want any information to be lost between me and, you know, the entry level employees, which are the most important employees to us, because that's the ones who talk to our customers every single day. So, mm -hmm. so we keep our organization, number one, flat. Number two, I get in front of people quite a bit. I spend a lot of my time on vision and product and marketing, because those three areas, along with, you know, sales on, on operation need to be the most aligned areas in the business. If you want to deliver the product, and then market the way that the product was designed to be delivered to solve a particular problem in the market, right? Mm -hmm. and, then, and then sales and operation has then much easier job because since if product and marketing are aligned, you know, we're not overselling, but we're providing value and we're not, you know, under delivering because we have, we have designed the product and delivered the message in the market the way it was intended so our mm -hmm. operation is easier job to deliver on that value so that's yeah. how i would say you know i look look the business and and you know people sometimes get shocked that that come from outside how in tune i am in the business i even had the conversation yesterday with one of our executives and he said look it took me a while to get used to this because i have never seen before a ceo to go from this high vision all the way to the trenches, the lowest denominator in the business and back. He said, like, <laughs> that's like something really unique, you know, and, 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 and I like to do that. And sometimes I take people for a ride while I'm doing it.
<laughs> I love that, Thomas. I think that is a that is a great place to conclude the conversation today because it comes back to how you execute on one of those things you mentioned early on in the conversation. And that's really serving a true gap in the market, not just a, a perceived need or trying to shove a product or service into uh, a gap that you're that you're trying to to create. So I think it comes full circle back to to where you started, but some uh like you said, every leadership style is a little bit different, but I think there are definitely some things to take away from from your humility and the way that you execute as a leader within your business uh, as well. So Thomas, if anybody listening to this would like to chat leadership, business, or learn more about what you and the team at Nextiva are up to after this, what's the best way for them to find you, reach out and connect? The, The best way would be on LinkedIn, on my LinkedIn account that you find under my name. Like that would be the best way to connect and then and then to have a conversation with me. I use it every day. I love it. Well, Thomas, this has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. All right, thank you. Digital marketing agencies have a tough job. You have to stay on top of the latest marketing strategies for your clients and your agency. What if there was a way you could address both at the same time? Imagine your agency putting out content with greater quality and quantity. Envision bringing your clients a turnkey solution for one of B2B marketing's fastest growing media strategies, podcasting. You know all those clients asking for your help with their account-based marketing efforts? Picture being the first to bring them the idea of content-based networking, showing them the proven strategy for breaking into their most coveted accounts. Here's the concept. Sweetfish Media is looking to work with a limited number of innovative agencies interested in a new partnership model. We produce a podcast for your agency. You introduce the power of podcasting and Sweetfish services to your clients. Everybody wins. Learn more at sweetfishpartners.com.